All right, let's talk about the Jets because last year they, of course, uh, it was a disappointment. They, they they had high hopes. I think they were thinking, hey, could we beat the 2020 Buccaneers, sign the elite quarterback, win a Super Bowl right away? Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, four snaps into the uh, game. And I think the Jets could have gone two different ways. They could have said, well, you know, Rodgers will get back. We'll be good. Uh, or they could have said, you know what? There were some other issues of our team last year. Let's address those issues. They've done that. They've addressed the issues. Because, like, first, you know, uh, several charts to look at. First, let's look at this one. This is where they uh, ranked in terms of each positional category uh, in terms of PFF grades. So, you know, they were 30th in passing, 31st in receiving. Quite frankly, the offensive grades are all awful. The the best they did was 27th in run blocking. Like that was number one on their offensive grades. It was a disaster across the board. And, and again, part of that is when one thing gets worse, it might be harder for the other thing to, you know, that, that might hurt other aspects as well. But the offense was a disaster. And while, you know, even if you throw in first graded, you know, uh, passing play in the mix there, there's still other issues they had to address. The defense was mostly good, so we're not, I'm not really going to talk about the defense that much in this video. Like, they added Hassan Reddick, that was good, although uh, they lost Bryce Huff, that's not so good, but, you know, for the most part, I expect the defense to be good. The question to me is more so, can the offense be good enough to turn them from a team that didn't make the playoffs to a team that now, if Rodgers healthy, can not just make the playoffs, but be a potential championship contender? First, let's talk about the offensive line, because that's kind of the big question after, you know, uh, offensive line was graded very poorly last year, second lowest graded offensive line in football, and also, you know, the obvious aspect of, hey, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Now, listen, Aaron got, Rodgers got hurt so quickly, it's hard to blame the offensive line. Rodgers was going to get hit at some point, even if he had a great offensive line. But still, you know, uh, protecting Rodgers is a priority, and, and they've made it a priority, adding two new tackles, Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, uh, both veteran guys who have been very good. Um, you know, uh, I think those are guys who, when they're playing well, are playing, you know, or just when they're playing in general, are playing great. Tyron Smith can be an elite level left, left tackle, and Morgan, Morgan Moses kind of been a consistently good right tackle for a while now. They also have center Joe Tipman, who's not great, but fine, uh, I thought. And maybe, you know, he's a young player, maybe another year under his belt could, uh, you know, he could improve. You don't have Elijah Vera Tucker, who's definitely shown flashes of being very good. John Simpson, maybe you could look for an upgrade, but isn't a disaster either. This, this offensive line, I don't think is going to wow you necessarily, but it is a solid offensive line that if it stays healthy, could actually be a really good offensive line. So for that reason, you could def definitely can feel optimistic if you're a Jets fan. As for the receiving core, so they also, again, made an effort to improve the receiving core. I was kind of concerned they weren't because, you know, again, maybe you just think, oh, hey, once Rodgers gets back, Alan Lazard's going to be awesome again. Well, maybe, but I wouldn't say he was ever awesome, and it's probably for the best to still, uh, you know, add another guy, if not multiple other guys. So Garrett Wilson's great, you know, fantastic. He's the number one. The addition of Mike Williams, if he can stay healthy, could be great for them. Having a really good guy who's, when he's healthy, feels like a, almost a fringe number one level talent. It's just kind of staying on the field. That's been his issue. Uh, that would be a really strong one-two punch. Now, you know, the other kind of receivers on the roster right now, Alan Lazard, Xavier Gibson, uh, Jason Brownlee, don't know if I'm in love with any of them personally, and, and it might be something that you, I I would still, with this receiving core, want to go out and get a third guy. Don't get me wrong, Lazard should be better once you have, you know, him and Rodgers do have chemistry, uh, the, you know, th there's value there. I, I just feel like I would... I would rather Lazard be kind of a four who can move up to a three if there's an injury than just starting the year as a three, personally. Uh, you know, uh, Tyler Conklin and Jeremy Ruckert are solid uh, tight end tandem as well, worth mentioning. But yeah, I mean, again, I think looking at this on paper, if this is healthy, this could be great. Here's the issue. These four players, Aaron Rodgers, Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, Elijah Vera Tucker, have all had their injury histories, and, and recently. I mean, uh, actually, weirdly, Tyron Smith was the one guy who was healthy last year out of these four. So how, you know, how much, many snaps are you getting out of these four? Because these aren't just four players on the roster. Listen, everyone has a player who's coming off of an injury or four in the NFL. Guys get hurt. It is what it is. But when you have kind of, I mean, four really important pieces of your team 
all coming off of an injury. That's kind of where the concern is. And again, if Rodgers goes down, then it's a lost season. They, they added to Rod Taylor, who I guess that's maybe the one thing you look at and say, well, it added depth there. If Rodgers misses six games, then it's not a lost season, right? Uh, you know, uh, Rodgers would try to come back uh, to play in the postseason last year. If they had Terod Taylor, maybe they would have been in the postseason and he could have done that. I don't know. Um, you also have, uh, you know, uh, Tyron Smith, who is someone who, again, that's kind of their replacement. That's that's their new tackle. That's kind of what's supposed to save things. But if, if he goes down, now you're in a bad situation again, offensive line wise. Him and Elijah Bear Tucker are that way. And Mike Williams, again, kind of like I said, I don't love the wide receiver uh, position depth as is right now. If you get rid of Mike Williams, you're essentially back to that receiving core that was 31st ranked in football last year. That's not good. Here's what I think the Jets have done a good job of, is I think the Jets have created a pathway where if they get lucky and don't have any major injuries, they could legitimately be championship contenders. I feel that way. I think what I would want to see the rest of the offseason, if I'm a Jets fan, is to them for them to work on depth. At the end of the day, football is a position about depth. That's part of why their defense is so good. They have so many good defensive players. I think what I would want to see them do, it doesn't have to be like a, you know, uh, using a super high pick like that, you know, a number 10 overall pick on a receiver or something like that. Although if the right receiver is there, I wouldn't hate it. But, uh, you know, maybe I, I would I want to see them add another offense, fi maybe find a, a guy who can play guard or tackle who, uh, you know, can be good there. And, uh, you know, as like a backup, as a sixth guy, I think that would be important. And I think adding another receiver, get, getting the depth would be really important for me. I kind of like what they've done in the sense if they have trade, you know, they traded for Hassan Reddick, like, like they've gotten some veteran players. They're kind of doing an all in push here, which I think is the correct move. I, I really think that, you know, so many teams, like let's use the Packers as an example. The Packers, hey, it worked out. You got Jordan Love. You seem to be in a good spot. Uh, but at the same time, they didn't win a Super Bowl in Rodgers' last years in part because they refused to do an all in push. And at the end of the day, I, you know, I'd rather have a Super Bowl than a good quarterback prospect. That That's how I view it. So for the Jets, they're going all in right now, trying to see if they can make a push and trying to see if they can win a Super Bowl right now, which I think is smart, but you can't forget about depth and you can't forget about the other stuff. Cause like, let's just be honest. Uh, you know, it, Tyron Smith, Mike Williams, uh, you know, Elijah Vera Tucker, Aaron Rodgers. If all four of those guys stay healthy, that's crazy that that happened, right? And it's also worth mentioning, like, other guys could get hurt. Like, what if Garrett Wilson gets hurt for, you know, a, a bit? Now you're in a real tough uh, situation. Like, that can happen. So, you know, what if uh, Morgan Moses gets injured? Like, like that can happen. Uh, depth in general means so much for every team. But I think especially for a team like the Jets with how they're constructed right now, it's almost like if they don't have any injuries, they're good. But they're like an injury away from kind of being back to what they were last year. Um, I would focus. They did a good job with Terod Taylor to kind of, you know, fix that for a quarterback uh, spot. I think they now need to just, you know, uh, hey, uh, use some resources on the receiver or the, uh, you know, offensive line to help out with that. That's how I would, uh, you know, I, I would definitely consider using that number 10 overall pick uh, for something like that. Maybe even trade up and get one of those receivers. That would be fun. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.